Good evening, the symbolism of the ashes. Genesis 3 verse 19 reads from the New Living Translation, by the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust and to dust you will return. The imposition of ashes is said to remind us as children of God of our mortality and the cause of it. It is to help us focus on the direction our lives are going so that we can examine ourselves and ensure our salvation is being manifested in our daily lives. The areas I want to focus on tonight as it concerns the symbolism of the ashes. First, the ashes symbolize mourning. In the Old Testament, people would sit in sackcloth and ashes to symbolize the adversity they were experiencing and believing that those adversities were caused by unrepentant sin, by those things that they were doing that displeased God. You will remember Job sat in sackcloth and ashes, although he didn't believe he had sinned. But Satan struck him nonetheless with a debilitating disease. In many respects, this imposition of ashes and sitting in sackcloth and ashes is a sign of humility that recognizes that God knows all things, even those things which we do not know concerning one another, concerning ourselves, and concerning this world. Secondly, the ashes symbolize the fact that humanity was made by God from the dust of the earth, shaped in the image and likeness of God. But this form, this dust suit that we wear shall not inherit eternal life. And so it is to tell us that, that we are finite creatures, but that we should not live this life as though it is all there is because there is life after death in eternal bliss with God the Father. And so we should always live our lives uh, being held accountable to God and the word of God. Thirdly, and finally, the ashes symbolize our dependence on our creator. The Bible declares that God breathed into man and man became a living soul. That without the breath of God, the ruach, of God breathe, being breathed in us each moment of our lives, we die. And that because God's grace and mercy are such that he looks beyond our faults and sees our need, it is a time of reflection for us to come together and thank God and give God the praise that is due his holy name. Jesus tells a parable about a rich man who prospered uh, in a, his agricultural pursuits and he stored all his harvest in barns and built bigger barns because he decided that he would just rest and live many days from that crop. But he didn't recognize that by hoarding and withholding from God that which was due to God, God was even demanding his life in that same night that he thought to take it easy. So we then are to appreciate God's goodness and give God those things that God requires of us. Finally, Monroe District, in a communal sense, the imposition of the ashes helps us to reflect uh, of the, upon the brutal treatment of our ancestors in the Middle Passage during slavery, during post-reconstruction, uh, during uh, the modern century where sex trafficking, human trafficking, uh, child slavery, uh, where people are being abused and, and mutilated and humiliated and treated as less than, that, than God desires because all of us are made in the image and likeness of God. And so we then are reminded that we have to be advocates for it is in the terms of God in Isaiah 58 that we are called to be action agents. We are called to, to do things that are gonna repair, repair breaches and are gonna mend fences, if you will, and cause reconciliation in the world. We are to stand up for what is right. We are to speak truth to power, but we are to recognize that we're all frail, human creatures depending on our God for sustenance. So though we are not actually putting on the ashes tonight, I want you to take a moment and reflect on these things as we move forward in the coming days of Lent. Thank you for listening to me. 
Now let us pray. And I'm going to pray the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, so that I may reasonably be happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever and ever in the next. Amen. God bless you is my prayer.